Distinguished history professor Randy Roberts is no stranger to television. A nationally regarded historian and an award-winning author, Professor Roberts has appeared in over 50 documentaries, speaking on topics ranging from World War II to boxing to astronauts. In this segment, he talks about a subject matter which he is personally very familiar with. I can't remember a time that I wasn't interested in history. I came to Purdue in the fall of 1988. The most popular course that I teach at Purdue that has been for a number of years is a course on World War II. But I also teach the second half of the American survey sometimes. I teach a course on sport history. I teach a big class, 250, maybe even 500 students. And I knew virtually all those students were convinced on the first day of class, this is going to be the worst course that I take this semester, okay? Because they've all had a bad experience with history, right? And I always felt, well, I can jump over that bar, okay? They have no expectations. The idea is to show the excitement of history. You know, when I walk into a classroom, every single time I think of the same thing. Okay, I have something to teach today. I will only teach it to this class of students one time in my life. I'm going to give it the best shot I can have. And what do I teach? I teach a course like World War II. Are you kidding me? If you can't make World War II interesting, you can't make anything interesting. It is the most compelling story, in my mind, in world history. Suddenly, they're interested. And also, it's not just the good students that are interested. You know, I really get an excitement when, you know, it's the C students, it's it's the below C students. It says, this is interesting. You know, I've, I've never been intellectually interested like this. It's easy to teach and to get people excited about a course like that. I look at my students and I get 18 year olds. They don't have rear view mirrors, okay? They're looking straight ahead. But suddenly you become 35 or 40 and you start looking behind you. How did I get here? They remember they took a course from me and hey, that guy talked about World War II or World War I in the course. I think I'll read a book about that or he talked about this individual. So I'm trying to, in a sense, plant a seed that maybe will bear fruit a decade or more down the road. What does Purdue expect from me? You know, number one, they expect me to teach. Students come here, we're paid to teach them. And, and, and I take that job very seriously. The second thing that we're paid to do is to do research, to write books. I write the kind of books that maybe you'd buy in a bookstore or you'll order on Amazon.com. I've written other books, textbooks. If you count everything, it's about 35 or so. I'm drawn to subjects that I'd like to read a book on, that I don't feel there's been a book written on it quite like the book that I want to write. That's not to say that my book's going to be better than another book, but I, I, I feel I have something different to say. I've gravitated towards writing books about iconic individuals and iconic events and what those individuals or events mean to America. So I've written about boxers, Jack Dempsey, Jack Johnson, Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, I've written about actors, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, several books on John Wayne. Uh, I've written about the Alamo. My latest book is, again, about an iconic individual, is a book called A Season in the Sun, The Rise of Mickey Mantle, and it came out in March of this year. The idea for this book was in the 1950s, Mickey Mantle was the god of baseball. I wanted to capture Mickey Mantle at his prime. And if you center on what is his best year, it was 1956 when he won the Triple Crown, when he threatened for a while Babe Ruth's sacred record of 60 home runs. And so I kind of focused in on America in the mid-50s and Mickey Mantle's place in that America. What holds my books together or my career together is that when I became a historian, when I went to graduate school, there was a lot of emphasis 
on telling a different story than previous generations had told. It was a story of politicians, of diplomats, of industrialists. It was a story that was told from the top down. What I'm trying to do is to tell the story of America looking at a heroes, icons, that don't come from the top, generally come from the bottom and work their way up. I still love teaching. I can't imagine not writing. And I always told myself, okay, you know, when I'm done with this book, I'm gonna take a year or so off and just concentrate on teaching. After 40 years of doing it, and never getting that break that I've always said I was going to do, you know, at some point you realize, this is who I am. This is what I do. I do it not for another promotion, not for anything outside. I do it because I love doing it, and I can't imagine not doing it. Most people, when they're 16 or 18, or you know, they don't think, I'm going to write books. And I didn't think about that. It wasn't until I was in graduate school that I thought, you know, this writing is kind of interesting. Then my dissertation got published very quickly. And so, you know, from then it was a next book and then a next book and, then, and suddenly that's who I was. You know, it's, it's funny what life does to you and how life defines you as you, as you move through it without really a, an active plan. Along with his many writing accolades, Professor Roberts has won several teaching awards. He's a two-time winner of Purdue University's Liberal Arts Teacher of the Year Award and was selected as the Indiana Professor of the Year in 2006. Also, in recognition of his exceptional teaching and mentorship, Professor Roberts was recently selected as one of 10 faculty members to be named 150th Anniversary Professor, coinciding with Purdue University's anniversary in 2019. That'll wrap up this edition of Boiler Bites. Remember that you can catch up on all our past stories at BoilerBites.com. See you next time!